All right, guys, I got a good one for you. I'm going to take the Phenom 2X6 1100T, and I'm going to take two Radeon HD 6970s. Okay, yes, yes, this is a 6950, but just to prove that I have successfully unlocked the card, you can see here, both GPUs are identical under GPU Z. So I do have them performing at 100% 6970 speeds. And I'm going to be comparing the 1100T on the 890FX platform. See, I've got a Crosshair 4 formula there. And I'm going to compare it against the A75 platform and AMD's new A8 APU. So I'm going to find out what kind of a performance difference there is between their new APU platform, which does have slightly higher performance per clock than at least the Athlon series. So it should be pretty close to a Phenom 2, okay, in terms of clock for clock performance. But this is a quad core and on the higher end platforms, you can get six cores now and eight cores coming soon. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to be testing a variety of current titles, including Crisis 2, DirectX 11, Witcher 2, Dirt 3, Fear 3, Battlefield Bad Company 2, and Civ 5. Don't mind the uh, other things on here, that's going to be for something else. Small change to the methodology, guys. I'm going to be using my 6990 because Crisis 2, apparently, in spite of using the 11.6 drivers, the latest uh, profiles, and the latest patch of Crisis 2, including DirectX 11 and high res textures, Still doesn't work in Crossfire, go figure. So these are all the runs of Crisis 2 I did, trying to go, okay, single card, multi-card, single card. Oh, you guys can't see the results that I'm bringing up. So you can see that we're getting some pretty good consistency there in spite of the fact that I was switching between a single 6970 and dual 6970. So I throw the 6990 on there, all of a sudden I get 49.5 FPS. So we're gonna stick with that for our testing. So I'll be testing that against the 1100T, or with the 1100T against the A75 platform. So I've got myself a benchmarking snack bowl. Unrelated to that though, I have finished running my tests for the 1100T, which was here. So that's running on the Crosshair 4 formula with the 6990. And then on my other platform, I've got the AMD Lano A83850 running with exactly the same test bench with the 6990. So I ran a variety of modern games, and what I found is that with an identical configuration, remember, with the APU, we're only taking advantage of the CPU component of it because the onboard graphics turns off if you install anything higher end than about a, shoot, what is this, Turks, I think it's 66, 70. So if you install anything higher end than something that looks about like this, it is going to turn itself off because it's not going to provide any additional benefit in dual graphics mode. Okay, so we're looking at its performance strictly as a gaming CPU against the 1100T, which is AMD's cream of the cream. Now, I think you'll find that in terms of price to performance ratio, it's pretty darn impressive. So the games I tested were Crisis 2. This is DirectX 11 with the high resolution texture pack. So everything is maxed out in this game. In fact, if I bring up my little email that I made for myself outlining all of my benchmarking settings. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, I don't have Crisis 2 in there, but whatever. It's, it's all maximum uh, with the DirectX 11 in the high-res pack. Actually, no, I think I'm at... Okay, give me a sec. Okay, sorry guys. For Crisis 2, I'm using all extreme presets, and then um, I'm running at obviously 1920 by 1080, and DirectX 11 is enabled, and the uh, uber high-res textures are enabled. So, for Crisis 2, the 1100T performed about 10% faster than the A8 APU with exactly the same configuration. The Witcher 2 was much closer. It was only about a 5% difference, which is pretty much, I'd say, within the margin of error because I am doing game run-throughs. I am not doing canned benchmarks on Crisis 2, Witcher 2, Fear 3, and Battlefield Bad Company 2. So there is some variance, although I do my best to run through exactly the same way every time. Now, Dirt 3 was one where the 1100T just blew away the A8 APU. It performed about 30% better, so 25-30% better, and Fear 3 was one where they were very close. So we start to see a pattern here. 
uh, come in and have a closer look at the graph. So we start to see a pattern here that says 76.2, by the way, sorry guys, where any game that is CPU bound or very multi-core aware is going to perform better on the 1100T platform, whereas any game where we're already quite graphically bound, such as The Witcher 2 or Fear 3, we're not going to see much of a difference in performance. Battlefield Bad Company 2, um, perhaps due to the increased CPU uh, load in that game, it does a lot of physics effects on the CPU, performed about 20 22% better on the 1100T and finally Civ 5 performed about 10% better and Civ 5 I was using a late game view uh, of a game that I actually played I have about 40 cities so what I do is I center it over one of my cities and then pull out all the way and see what the frame rate is in the corner so thank you guys for checking out my little gaming performance showdown between AMD's highest end CPU and then their new just phenomenal, although it's, you can't really call it phenomenal because it's not even a Phenom. Um, oh, that's mind blowing, right? And their new APU. So stay tuned for more APU content around the 3850. And don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.